Hi everyone and welcome to today's session and today's session is on sleep. We are joined by two special guests today, the pupil support captains and also sleep ambassadors. We've got Sophie Clow and Preeti Kerr. So what we're going to be doing today is talk about the importance of sleep and how that impacts someone's mental health. So first of all Preeti, why is sleep important? Um, sleep is something that everyone should think about and it's a very important thing that we have in our life. It can be mentally important and physically important as it's involved in healing and repairs our heart and blood vessel. It's a very essential thing for our mind to recharge and get refreshed and when we wake up we're alert in the morning. It's health. It's the healthy sleep can also help the body to remain healthy and stave off diseases like problems can occur like incre increasing heart disease, kidney disease and high blood pressure and stroke. And mentally it can cause anxiety and depression as um, mentally you would feel that um, you can't cope with stuff and that kind of stuff. Thank you. Sophie, kind of pretty was kind of mentioning there some of the aspects of anxiety, etc. But mm -hmm. how can sleep impact someone's mental health? So sleep can affect your mental health through your change of mood. So if you're in a conversation with someone and you've not got enough sleep, you're kind of going to be like a negative Nancy and you're going to be all sad and moping around because you've not got enough sleep. Um, your concentration levels are going to go down. So obviously because you're sleep deprived, you're not mentally prepared for anything really and you've got raised levels, levels of anxiety and depression which can therefore lead to other problems which are not the best. <laughs> so in order to get a good night's sleep, if someone is struggling, pretty, what strategies should we be offering them in order to get a good night's sleep? Um, number one thing, I think you should prioritise your sleep. You should think about how many times do you sleep in a day and how much um, you should have it as a priority list, as your to-do list, that you should sleep at this time and um, have enough sleep in the morning that you can wake up. And I'll hand in to Sophie to talk about the second point of why sleep is important. Um, another way sleep is important is like, you could um, read a book or listen to like relaxing music to help. Um, you could like knit and do like jigsaw puzzles is to like because it's a repetitive thing and it makes your brain focus on that one thing and it makes you sleepy. And another tip that you can have um, is that you should do like no naps in between because as you, when you want to go to bed, you want to go to bed tired and ready to sleep as bed should be the place where you should go to sleep and you shouldn't do other things surrounding to bed activities as bed is a place that you should go to sleep. So um, try to like make your bed area where you sleep, not like where you do your schoolwork or um, watch um, TV and that kind of stuff. Another one you could do is like, sorry, did you want to say something? No. Okay, so <laughs> um, you could do yoga and like take a warm bath. So like you're relaxing all your muscles and you're stretching out and you're just, you know, ready to relax and calm the brain. And the last thing I want to say is don't panic um, when you're going to sleep. Try to have, when you go to sleep, a clear mindset ready to sleep nothing to stress and try to have like in probably like one hour do activities what Sophie said which will help you calm yourself that you can when you go to sleep you go to sleep peacefully and not stressfully mm. okay thank you so much guys that was really informative um <laughs> To kind of summarise now, if someone is actually needing help with their sleep or struggling with sleep, what resources are out there to help them? Um, one of the really, um, one very good website is out there, which is called Sleep Scotland. You can visit 
and they can spot you with sleep as well if like anyone's struggling with sleep they have training sessions there as well where they offer and they're like professional um, training sessions that you can go to and there's um ways that you can educate yourself and there's also because of the COVID-19 updates how to like um have a better sleep during the really rough time of the year and um you can also have a sleep diary which I have one here right with me as well which I haven't filled yet but to showcase the sleep diary is like where um you can write your patterns down of your sleep as well um, before when you go to sleep and during how you feel when you sleep and um, the things you do before going to sleep and how you feel after sleep as a sleep diary kind of thing. Excellent, thank you so much. And of course in school you've got our two lovely sleep ambassadors as well you can go to and speak to who can offer you advice. So Sophie before we kind of sum up is there anything else important that we want to talk about sleep? Well, teenagers of our age should really get eight to ten hours of sleep and you can find like even more methods on how to fall asleep and how to regulate your sleep pattern on the Sleep Scotland website. So they've got a lot of good information there and you can contact them um, from ten to four every weekday because they are working from home now. Okay guys, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you so much for all the information you've got. And for them to, who is listening, of course, if you want any more information on sleep, you can contact Sophie or Prete directly, and I'm sure they'd be glad to help. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.